Hello everyone, it's GigaBeef here and today I'll be showing you the best ways to use 556 this wipe both regarding weapons and more importantly the ammo as this is so much more restrictive in patch 14 than it was last time. I'll also be showing you a weapon that I think is a hidden gem but more on that later. So with the changes to ammo it can seem like 556 is impossible to use now. M855 commonly thought of as the most basic usable ammo for 556 previously is now at Peacekeeper 3 which requires a player to be at least level 23 and m 856 a one, which was a typical staple of the mid game, is now on Peacekeeper 4, which is at least level 37. From level 1, we're staring down the barrel of RRLP with 72 damage but only 11 pen, and an ammo that no one has really ever even looked at before. Peacekeeper 2's M856, FMJ, and Warmageddon don't offer much respite, with FMJ probably being the best here, unless you're looking to leg meta someone, as this has at least 23 pen. The saving grace of FMJ, I guess, is that with the new armor system, you should be able to penetrate most non-plate protection, which is overwhelmingly class 2 on the easily available modular armor that you're likely to face in the early to middle stages of the wipe, but even FMJ itself is quest locked behind Tiger Safari. To be fair, this is only the second quest down Peacekeeper's line before becoming available, which isn't actually that obnoxious. So what to do? Is 556 really dead until much later in the wipe? Well, the trick here is the workbench. The 556 has always been a slightly later game ammo compared to something like 545, even in 13.5's short 4 month patch where M856A1 was on Peacekeeper 2, players typically didn't run it straight away. You have always generally needed the flea market for cheap access to the guns and suppressors as well as the trader levels for ammunition and patch 14 is no different except this time it comes through at level 20 and mechanic 2 instead. The important part here is that you can unlock Workbench Level 2, which unfortunately no longer contains M856A1, but it does have a new craft, Mark 318 Modo SOST. This is one of the other I've never heard of this ammos along with RRLP, but this one got a buff this wipe by BSG, so it now sits in between M855 and M856A1 in terms of penetration. With 55 damage and 33 pen, it's a solid cartridge, especially in the context of the new armor system where class 3 soft armor is the best that you can do on modular carriers, and given that 545pp was nerfed too from 36 pen to 34, it makes Mark 318 actually pretty decent. The craft itself doesn't cost too much either, as 2 kites and 1 eagle gunpowders comes to about 55k, and considering that you get 150 bullets out of the other end, that's only about 365 rubles around. The base craft time of just under 5 hours is also not terrible, as you can get a couple of these done per day if you have access to your PC. Overall then, the ammo method for 556 early is firstly to make good use of the copious amounts of M855 that you get if you start as USEC, unlucky bears, and push to workbench 2 so that you can make Mark 318 to keep your ammo supply somewhat consistent with bullets that have decent pen. Get Peacekeeper's Tiger Safari done as soon as you can and stack the crafted ammo with FMJ early on to make it go further, and once you hit Peacekeeper 3, use M855 underneath instead. You can utilize the new ammo packing preset creator to easily make magazines of 20 FMJ or M855 underneath, topped off with 10 Mark 318, which should retain your offensive capabilities without using 4 hours worth of crafting in two raids. This should stand you in good stead until Peacekeeper 4, supplemented by any better bullets such as M856A1, M855A1 or M995 that you find in raid, as these can all spawn in boxes of up to 100 now, or alternatively find some on ADAR scavs like I have done occasionally this wipe. One final note about the ammo is that although M855A1 is not on the traders anymore, it turns out that it is craftable on the Workbench 3, but you have to complete your car needs as service first. This is the quest after Cargo X Part 4 that needs the dealership closed section key primarily sourced from Caban. With the bosses spawning at an incredibly low rate at the moment, this one is pretty annoying to do simply because the key is often multiple millions due to sheer rarity on the fleet. Now that we have the ammo system hammered out, let's take a look at some of the weapons in the context of the new recall system. One important thing that appears to be the case about the new model of recall is that in the absence of any PMC auto control in the initial spray, the vertical recall number seems to control the distance between the impact of the bullets in a much more direct way than it used to. Previously, because our PMC started to control the weapons straight away but with an over-exaggerated initial recoil, this resulted in low RPM weapons outperforming those with high RPM significantly due to the longer time for the auto control to work on each bullet's recoil. Now however, the muzzle rise seems to be much more closely correlated with the actual recoil number irrespective of the RPM. We can see this here in a test using a few different weapons with various recoils that, honestly, all look pretty similar. 
The MDR is the lowest with 62 recoil, which we can clearly see, and the M4 used with 67 recoil is in between that and the other two. The Star here has 73 recoil and the G36 was the highest with 79, but the differences between them are honestly quite small. What seemingly matters now more for RPM is that the faster a weapon fires, the quicker it pulls up into this full auto stable state, which by itself makes it harder to control because a high fire rate weapon simply moves faster even if the spray pattern itself ends up looking the same. I did end up testing the G36 and MDR again with a suppressor because I didn't do that originally, showing the 73 recoil G36 and an MDR at 58 instead, which didn't reveal anything that much more insightful. So next, let's take a look at two more interesting weapons in the caliber. First up is the HK416, a long forgotten gun gathering dust in the corner of Peacekeeper's shop ever since patch 1212, as with its 850 RPM fire rate, it went from being the king of the chads to an uncontrollable disaster. Patch 14 though has probably revived the 416, as even with a relatively unmodded version with a basic suppressor and a foregrip coming in at 75 recoil, compared to our 67 recoil M4 it would be hard to tell which is which. As a relatively expensive base gun, it's not one that I really plan on using particularly, but the high RPM does make it pretty punchy in CQB environments with extended mags, which is what it was typically used for in the first place before it got dethroned. For completeness on the full auto weapons, I did test the AK-101 as well, my old favourite 556 min-max rifle, which seems pretty much in line with the rest. So finally, onto the juicy gun that I think is really good now, and it's a bit of a surprising one, which is the Org. Now, I have already recommended this once at level 1 traders, because with the new recoil, the inbuilt scope on the A1 is actually usable. It's certainly not great, but all optics have become at least serviceable now, and the Org is no exception. But what really makes the AUG insane is the combination of incredibly low base recoil and the ability to mod it at Peacekeeper 3. Yes, this does make it a bit of a later pickup compared to some of the others, but Peacekeeper 3 is one of the earlier tier 3 traders at only level 23, which makes it a bit less bad. Until then, you are stuck with the A1's default sight, but do note that the recoil on this begins at 46, which is in fact one recoil point higher than the absolute best M4 that you can make these days, which to me is kind of crazy. The A3 edition is slightly more customizable out of the box because it has a picatinning rail on top of a similar sight to the A1, but it comes with a rail for tactical devices as well. However, the A3 often costs a chunk more than the A1 to the tune of 20 to 30k. But what you can do is you can grab the A1 at around 50k and mod it with the A3 upper from Peacekeeper 3. You pop the 20 inch barrel back in as well as the default vertical foregrip and again from Peacekeeper 3 you can buy the low sight mount as well that lets you add any close range sight that you like. There is a high amount if you want more flexibility with longer ranged optics, but I usually go with the low one to minimize height over bore, which is really, really low on this gun. Then you can use whatever muzzle combo that you want. The cheapest is probably the default muzzle that you can put back on, and then the org specific T4 Ranger suppressor because it only fits onto the org and is often under 30k on the fleet. But in order to make this weapon sing, in my opinion, you want to counter the relatively low starting ergo using the Ratworks muzzle adapter instead, which lets you convert to the regular 556 muzzle break and suppressor combos. Of these, the SF3P from Mechanic 2 or the War Comp from Skier 2 combined with the Mini Monster is still one of the most effective ways to retain ergonomics, and with recoil this low, we didn't really need the bonus to it anyway. This ergo boost is especially important if you want to bring a 3x1 rig to max out the gun with 42 rounders, as these hit ergonomics by 7, but even with this, you'll probably still be in the low 50s depending on the particular combination of sights and tacticals that you decide to use, which is pretty good for a suppressed weapon. So finally, let me show you the test of the AUG against the MDR for reference, which should be remembered was one of our lowest recoil weapons that we saw from the first section, and it beats it by a clear mile. Given the AUG fires faster as well at 715 RPM, it lives in this nice middle ground here above the SCAR, the MDR and the AK-101, but below the G36, the M4 and the HK, with an extremely controllable recoil and it only costs about 125,000 rubles for the base weapon. By this I mean no sights or tactical devices, but the Mini Monster is probably the most expensive part in the whole build, so it's worth bearing in mind that there is a barter for this too using the VHS tape, because that is cheaper sometimes. In the new recoil system, I actually think this suppressor is great on quite a few guns actually, not just the Orc. As a reminder, we do have a new album for the channel called Phoenix over on Spotify created in partnership with Low Wave Records who produce music for content creators to use. Listening does directly help to support the channel and it's all copyright safe so creators are free to use the tracks in the background of streams and content too. There's a link in the description and the pinned comment so go and check it out along with the original album Memories which is also there as well. If you want to see more options of what to use in patch 14 in the early mid game, go and check out my level 2 traders guide next. Otherwise, as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.